Okay guys, so today we have the Stokes Workshop, workshop again, um, but today I have to do a presentation, so you might see some of the presentation, I'm going to try and get someone to video it for me, and um, you might see some of a video I made for the start of that presentation, and uh, then you'll see whatever else I do today. So I'll see you towards the end, and I'm going to give all the shout outs at the end, because I woke up too late, and I have to run to this workshop. Okay, I'll see you at the end. types of models that we, we had a kind of initial model that didn't work out so good and then we made a better model basically. and then for a specific case we found a simpler equation. So this again is just describing what a stint is and a catheter so he finds the blockage and then you just expand out the stint or the balloon if you want to just do the delivery thing. Um, and this again is a stint so since we expanded and then you're okay afterwards. And the balloon is removed along with the catheter. Um, okay. Yeah. okay, so obviously these are really extensive and important for the knee protection. So we're given the these problems. So this is uh, this is what houses the catheter. And if the catheter doesn't fit properly into the tube, it's left exposed like this, which could uh, obviously damage the, the the stent itself or it could also tear the packaging and these are the dimensions of a, a typical hoop and we obviously don't want it to be you know bent too much because it's going to affect the, the actual material so okay. so the, the, the actual catheters are made of two materials there's going to be a stainless steel part and a more flexible uh, kind of a plastic, plastic type uh, material. So um, the steel part is going to adhere mostly to the outside of the hoop, and then the plastic will kind of tend towards the inner uh, part of the tube. So what we have to kind of consider is the dimensions also of um, the plastic tube, the, 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 the di diameter of the actual hoop, and how many turns are in the actual hoop itself. Um, so, so these are the dimensions then and we'll pop here. We have to also take account of manufacturing tolerances. It would only give you a certain amount per catheter. So they wanted us to come up with something that could give them the optimal length uh, that they could just type in their length of catheter and then we it would spit out the length of hoop it, they should uh, use for the, the, the catheter itself. And this can then, you know, save cost and time and uh, protect the, the equipment itself. So these are all the variables that we use in our uh, equations coming up, length and uh, thickness, etc. And I'll pass it over to Dylan to go over the models that are 
this is the first model where we were just trying to figure out where to start with this. So we modeled the spiral as circles instead. So we had like outside circles and worked our way in. And we just calculated the circumference of each circle and then added up all those lengths together. And then the last little bit is when you have a little bit less or more than a full circle, you use the last bit to add on the last bit. So like say if you had 3.25 turns of the circle, you don't, that is for the 0 0.25. Um, so that was the circle method. The circle method gave us answers that were much larger than what they were currently getting. So we went and found the spiral method. So the spiral method is the called the Archimedean spiral. And uh, its main application at the moment is for toilet roll. <laughs> but uh, it was similar to our problem, we just need to increase the thickness. So, uh, so this is the equation here. So basically, this big integral at the top here is how you calculate the length of uh, the hoop or the toilet roll. And um, over here, uh, we just basically integrated that equation and we got it in terms of the outside radius, which was set to whatever the packaging was. And then the A is the inner radius, and the B is the thickness between each spiral of the loop. Um, and then the length we were set as the catheter plus 35 mil, which they want as the gap between the ends. So we ran that calculation in Maple, and we found A, and then we substituted A back into the equation again to find a new L, which was the like length of the hoop at the end. And then another thing we did was because the steel follows the outside, we used a different equation for the outside hoop using a different outside diameter to start on. And then for the plastic bit, we did the inside hoop because it followed the inside hoop mostly. And then we worked out between the two of them what was the like optimal solution. And that's what that's saying. We just added them together then to get whatever the hoop length is. Um, so we got like a, an upper and lower bound, and the nominal was much more closer to what we were seeing in real life. So, And then this equation is for a specific case. For any hoop wound thing, if B is much smaller than A, you can use this equation to get like a fast answer. So say if it was like something that was really thin, like sellotape, in relation to the hoop that it goes around, you could work it out with this much faster than using the big integral. And then we checked the two models against each other to see if they were correct. And uh, we compared the results of the both of them. Um, and we figured the spiral one was much better. And then we put it all into an Excel file. So Metatronic just has to type in the length of their catheter and their different dimensions. And they'll get the hoop length of the end. So that's that. Uh, and then we'd like to thank Metatronic and everybody on the team, Terry and stuff, um, for everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's excellent. I uh, have some questions, please. Sorry, Martin. So your input is basically the length of the capture. Yeah, unless they want to change the thickness of their tubes. Or and then you have three variables in your length. So the yeah, so we've three lengths then to figure out what the we've three dimensions to figure out what the hoop length is. So, so you fix two of the values and then you choose the other one to fix the length, is that what you do? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I think we were discussing this issue a little bit during this day. There is a part of this uh, object which, uh, now this is a purely geometrical treatment. Yeah. But if you want to study it mechanically, it's really a complicated problem because it's a problem with unilateral constraints. Because yeah. there is a, this kind of channel, and yeah. so the, the rod can only be, can only touch, but of course cannot enter the channel. So it's a unilateral contact problem. And on top of this, there is even different flexibilities because the initial part is more flexible and the second part is less flexible. Yeah. I was wondering, this is very complicated mechanic, I am sure. Is, um, it, is it worth doing it? Or so the thing that we noticed was 
Um, like you could apply the stiffness equations and stuff and work out what the stiffness of each material is and figure out when the next one bent. But it doesn't really matter because as long as they're made of two separate materials that are of different stiffness and the second stiffness and the second one is less stiff than the first, it'll always follow. It bends in, and then it bends out at the same angle. So you, they're negligible. So if you take it as the inside, they both cancel with each other anyway. So it doesn't matter as long as the second stiffness is less than the first stiffness. It will follow the answer. I see. Did you? Yeah. Michelle? And then in the maple file you were solving equations, but then in the Excel file, what, what did you... We just put the maple one into an Excel file so it would be easier for the factory people to do. So you put in the equation into the Excel they just put the inputs in, then the equations are like at the bottom, but it just solves it. Too much. They give you data in the file, don't they? So is the yeah. data they get in your file consistent with your model? Did you make yeah. yeah. And they didn't change it if they have different specifications of who or anything. Like we put it so they can change all the variables as they want. Yeah. So why don't they overkill it then? Would you merge down longer? Yeah, but also the, the spacing for uh, the packages and stuff, they have a certain uh, the square package and you know, stupid packages. And also if it spends too much, yeah, it would pass it the yeah. it'll come out all. Yeah. You don't want that in your body. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Can I ask questions? Of course, yeah, about <laughs> How tall is this one? They put it in the body. You know? How long is it? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 yeah. We have to put this in last and year. And there is a little specific thing. area that should be put in the heart or just... Oh. So this goes okay. up here all the way into your heart or up your arm all the way into your heart. Okay. <laughs> so it's obviously dependent on what? No, about the like... Uh, Inside, it was a small one. Yeah, no, it's not. They take this back up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's find it. <laughs>guys so that was that blog um it was of the talk pretty much that i done in the uh, stokes workshop with my group so if anybody in the stokes workshop thinks i shouldn't have this up or i should cut out a bit or whatever um just let me know and i know who was there anyway so i'll cut it out if you want um so we're gonna do the shout outs now at the end um, so we're going to do all six shoutouts for today. So the first one is Charles Casillo. Then we have Residence Hotel Galway. Then we have River Rivera Com A Com True. Then we have Kayleen Brian. Then we have Irish Daily. And then we have Romeo Romeo Dublin. Okay, so they are the shoutouts at the end of the vlog. If you would like a chance to get a shout out in another vlog, make sure to go over to Instagram and like whatever the most recent picture is, and that's your best chance to get a shout out in one of the vlogs. Um, and then when you've done that, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications. So if you get your shout out, you know you got a shout out. Okay, guys, so I will see you in the next one. Good luck. Anyway, yeah. Brian, I'm gonna be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. 60% of the time, it works. Every time. That doesn't make sense.